with men. Or something interesting could change, maybe around an asymptote or something, change from increasing to decreasing, we've seen that before. So the ideas are, find all the places where the numerator and the denominator equals zero. So in our case, the numerator equals zero when x is, or when negative 48x is equal to zero, that says x equals zero. That's going to be one critical number. That possibly is a relative max or relative min. Now, where the slope is undefined, it's not necessarily a critical point, but it could change from whether, whether the graph is increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So, in our case here, hopefully you can see this, denominator equals zero when x is four and negative four. That's, it's not coincidental that that's our, our vertical asymptotes. Those points can come up again, especially with the quotient rule, when you notice you're just squaring the denominator. So three critical values that we're going to be putting on our first derivative table. We've got our 0, our 4, and a negative 4. Take a look at this. Hopefully you've written this down. I'm going to erase this right now and write it right up here. That way I can work on my second derivative. And what we got out of that again was 0, 4, negative 4. Okay, second derivative test was going to give you concavity. So let's take the second derivative, see what we get. Again, write this down, I'll erase it when I'm done. This is going to be the fourth power since we're squaring that square. Notice the plus, I'll change that right now, just make a negative negative into a plus. Also, I'm going to take a shortcut here. I know I, I tell you not to do this, but we're going to take a general power rule times the derivative of the inside, and that should be our derivative. Now, we're going to do a little fancy math here. We're going to simplify a couple pieces, but I'm going to leave a couple pieces alone because I want to factor it. I want you to see the factorization. So hopefully you've seen what I've done. Um, I've multiplied the 2x times the 2 and this x to make it 4x squared. I'm leaving the 48 alone because I want you to see that factorization. It just makes things a little bit easier for us. So I'll be factoring out my 48 from right here. Also I'll be factoring out x squared minus 16 from here and one of them from right here. So what that's going to leave us with, be careful on your signs, check this out, factor out your 48. Factor out one of your x squared minus 16s. What you're left with is negative x squared minus 16. Negative and one of those is remaining. Plus the 48 is gone. 
we have 4x squared. The x squared minus 16 is gone. Check it with distribution if you really want to, but if you distribute this in, that's negative 48x squared minus 16 squared plus 48 times 4x squared and then x squared minus 16. So that's the correct factorization. Almost done. One last little step. What we're going to do is simplify this a little bit. If you look at that, that's negative x squared plus 16. plus 4x squared. That's 3x squared plus 16. Also, we're going to simplify out one factor of x squared minus 16. So gone, part of that's gone. That's our second derivative. That's about as good as we can make it. Now, what the second derivative is, again, it's concavity. It's how your slope is changing, or in other words, the curvature of your line, of your, of your graph, if you will. So whether it's increasing or decreasing, we can have two different types of that. We can have increasing concave up, increasing concave down. We can have decreasing concave up. We can have decreasing concave down just like that. So what this says is to find those points where you change, where you possibly could change concavity, set your numerator equal to zero and your denominator equal to zero. The numerator gives you the possible inflection points, like the actual numbers, the values, where you can plug them into the actual function and get a point. The denominator says where the second derivative is undefined. Well, it could still change concavity at those places, but you probably won't find a point because it's most likely an asymptote. So here, if you try this, well, notice that. 3x squared plus 16. Is that ever going to be, is that ever going to work for you? 3x squared plus 16 equals 0. Well, 3x squared equals negative 16. x squared equals negative 16 over 3. Can you have x squared equals negative? The answer is no, not the real number system. So here that's not going to give us any possible inflection points. So the, the numerator pretty much doesn't give us anything. The denominator, you're going to see again, those same points keep popping up. Even from the beginning of our, our function, we had 4 and negative 4 as being undefined. That happens here as well. So again, we're going to have the points 4 and negative 4. Okay, again, take a close look. That's our second derivative, all worked out for you, nice and pretty. Set equal to 0, numerator. Nothing. Denominator, same points we've gotten before. I'm going to erase it and then we're going to talk about step number five. We'll, we'll plug all this stuff in, we'll make a nice table, we'll have the points from our original function in uh, step number six and then I'll graph it. And what this gave us was 4 and negative 4 again. Now when we make the table, hopefully you remember this from class or from previous videos if you're watching this on video. We put our first derivative up top, second derivative on the bottom, and basically it gives us a, a kind of a, a concise version of our graph, of our function on a graph. So we're going to put all of these points on the top, got to be in order, and these points on the bottom. And what we do is we test specific points in each interval, and what that's going to tell us is 
where our graph is, increasing or decreasing for the top, that's our first derivative, or concavity for our second derivative. So I would test the points like negative 5, negative 1, 1, and 5. And we're testing them in the respective derivatives. So here, we'll be using the first derivative. On the bottom, we're taking second derivative, so concavity, and we'll test some similar points, but make sure you put them in the second derivative, not the first, not the original. Original function gives you points on a graph. First derivative gives you increasing or decreasing. Second derivative gives you concavity. So let's try this. If you want to try it at home, plug in your own points. But we're going to try f prime of negative 5. That's a negative times a negative. This is our first derivative. Again, remember, first derivative. Negative times a negative is a positive. That's a positive because it's squared. That means that this is positive. You don't exactly care about the whole value of it. You care whether it's positive or negative. Increasing. Negative 1. Well, that says negative times negative is a positive over a positive. Again, that is positive. Increasing. Next up, we have 1. Negative times a positive is a negative over a positive. That's going to be a negative. Decreasing. 5. Negative times a positive is a negative over a positive is still a negative. Decreasing. Second derivative is telling us some more things. It will say, plug in negative 5, but now do it to the second derivative. Second derivative is right here. This is, well, let's see. Negative 5 squared, well, that's going to be positive, plus positive, positive, oh, that's positive. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. I think I drew that wrong. If you were watching at home, you might, you might have noticed that what's Mr. Leonard thinking. Uh, that should be a power 3. I was kind of thinking through that thinking, wait a second, that, uh, that doesn't make too much sense. So let me change it to a positive 3, and then we're going we're gonna to check this point again. I think that one's going to work out for us, but make sure you have a 3 right there, because that would be a big mistake. I, I forgot to, I erased it before I copied it down, so bad mistake on my part. Uh, let's check it one more time. Let's check the negative 5. So negative 5 squared, that's, well, that's positive, times of 3 is positive, plus 16 is still positive, times 48, that's positive. Now let's check it down here. We have negative 5 squared, that's 25. Minus 16, well, that's still positive, and when you cube it, it'll still be positive. So we're okay on the concave up. It's still going to be concave up. This is the one that's going to be changing for us. If we plug in 0, 0, well, that's 16, times a positive number, that's still positive. But look what happens down here. 0 squared is 0. Minus 16, well, that's a negative. What happens when you cube a negative? Well, it's still a negative. So this is going to be concave down. And it's concave down for its entirety. Notice how we didn't get that 0 in our second derivative. So that's not going to be a place where we're changing concavity. 5, same thing's going to happen as negative 5. We're going to have a